One large scheme in northwest Kilmarnock is home to over a thousand families. A few of those families agreed to be filmed over a year. The scheme follows six of the most colourful and sometimes chaotic households, charting the ups. And you met me, Steve Old McMurray, we never it's on top run a mock run fucking star. And downs of life. So so sorry. And I love you forever, my dear. The series follows people fighting for the scheme. I feel that amount of money you're just going to be hitting your feet after the war. And fighting just to keep their families from falling apart. They could die around in my house and then we all get roped into a murder. No, it's not happening. Yeah. Hey there. Previously on the scheme, Former Hellraisers Gordon and Annie were desperate to keep their family on the straight and narrow. Don't start shouting at me. You're no stranger. Aye, all right. Their eldest son Brian served a spell in jail after a long list of charges finally caught up with him. You give him the full work. Hey, that man had says he called him all the bin laden bastards and all that. If that wasn't bad enough, they heard rumours that their youngest son, 20-year-old Chris, was taking heroin. I was just hoping that we went to help him, just to admit the truth, that he, that he has taken it. Chris, though, was denying everything. That's not my mum. She's well up your sheet. Chris had also got his 16-year-old girlfriend, Candice, pregnant. We were talking about having a wee and that, and then it just happened. Candice's mum, Kay, was dead against Candice having a baby with Chris. What are you going to do if you've got a tenner? Right, and you're needing nappies and milk, and Chrissy needs a bag of smack. Who's going to win? Candice was determined to stay with Chris, and convinced he would be there for her. He wants to come off it, but every, he just fucks it up every time. Two months on, Chris has managed to get a house from a charity that supports the homeless, and Candice has moved in with him. Chris is still denying taking heroin. So definitely not using? No. <laughs> What's the time, Candice? Five to two. Chris may be denying things, but Candice is still worrying about what she's seeing and whether he will be there for her during the pregnancy. Kenzie's sail went downhill because he sees it to me. He's still got the kind of mood swings and that. Just <laughs> Chris's parents, Gordon and Annie, are devastated about the changes they're seeing in Chris. Jeez. Fucked up with that junk. Tried my best for him, but just need help from him. Annie is on the phone to Candace's mum, Kay, as Annie thinks she has some information about a wee that was stolen from Kay. We never turned the box. Well, just I and was, was there a steering wheel hanging that way? Kay's wee lassie's wee gets stolen out of the house. Right, Kay, okay. And uh, right, supposed to be a certain boy who's got it, got it for £60. I was telling her that a wee got sold two weeks ago, that's when the ratings got stolen out of the house. And I tell her the boy's name who sold it and who he sold it to. Because uh, I've got a feeling that it could be that, it could be the ratings. Annie's call means Kay now knows the person in the scheme who has bought her daughter Kendall's stolen wee, and she already knows his number. Kendall's wee and wee fit and her games and all that get stolen two weeks ago. Who's that? Hello. That was my fucking wins Christmas present. Is that wee Chrissy, black bastard? I'm getting up charged, I swear to God, am I? Well, at first it was a laptop, two phones, the Wayne's Nintendo DS, and now a Wii, and Wii Fat and all that, so I'm getting them charged. The new owner of the Wii is saying that he bought it from Chris. 
It was Krasi that stole the Wayne's wee. Kay thinks Candice must have helped Chris steal the wee and is furious with her. She's lost in the to through this. It's a rain for it. I feel pure gutter and by her. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Last time on the scheme, one family, the Crees, were leading the fight to reopen the old community centre, which their mum and dad had started, and their family had been running as volunteers for two generations. Once we get inside, do you think we'll come back out? <laughs> <laughs> it's a Satan! <laughs> they had a huge emotional attachment to the centre, and they were fundraising round the clock to get the doors open. But after their mum got diagnosed with cancer and then passed away, it looked as if their loss might stop them in their tracks. I just thought well, she was my mum, but I feel she's a lot of special for it. But as their mum had wanted, the family rallied together again. So we're more determined now for the centre, because that's what my mum wanted. They had a crucial meeting with two councillors where tempers flared. They were frustrated about several unexpected costs eating into their hard-earned funds. I asked you one thing. You know this fundraising and you feel as if you're just hitting your head off a wall. Aye. Including having to pay for a survey on the building before they took it on. How do you think it went? I waste a fucking time. A month on, with the survey now booked in and paid for, Anne and Janet Cree decide to check out the state of the old community centre for themselves. See, there's a big crack right up the middle of the building, going right up to the roof. I actually seen another one on our in here. See that bit there? Going right down. I just need to wait till the surveyor comes and see what he says about it. The council have offered the rent for the old community centre for just one pound, but the residents' committee will have to prove that they can pay for any maintenance and repairs before they get the keys, including fixing any cracks. There's another big bit, Janet. Two great big cracks right up to the window ledge, you know. That's actually right through the window ledge. Hopefully it's no anything serious, but if it is, it'll cost, really cost to get it done. Last time on the scheme, Libby was desperate for her eldest son James to kick his heroin habit. It used to be a couple of years of normality, it was known now. She said, I just feel the end there, killing myself. I couldn't do that to my family. With the family in turmoil, her second son, 15-year-old Stephen, had gone off the rails and had been excluded first from mainstream school and then a charity-run support unit. I don't think it'll be like okay. No intention, it just, it just happens, man. He'd also picked up a charge for allegedly breaking into the local post office. Stephen, though, had realised that he didn't want to follow his brother into a future of crime and drugs and was determined to turn his life around. I don't want to be having to go to court, not to age anyway, or for things like that, it's just my daftness. Today is the first part of the court hearing, and Stephen could get locked up for a year. His sister, Kerry, is there to lend her support, as she has done several jail sentences herself. I'm a bit nervous, but it should be all right, man. It's my wee bra, so hopefully she'll be all right. It's his trial when we're worried about Obviously, I'm still worrying the day, because it's... My wee brother at court, not a mix I've been through it all, and I know what it's like. I'll probably be a bit paranoid, but it should be all right. Hopefully, it's all right anyway. A wee bit nervous, just as because I'm going to see the judge, you know. Being a judge, our best pals. <laughs> At Chris's house, he is denying stealing the wee from Kay, and although Candice is expecting, her mum is refusing to have any more contact with her. I don't even care anything about it, and I'm getting to blame it. I wouldn't even do that. Just strip it. And he was with me all weekend, I know. I told him we better get off it soon. But I'm not going to be with him anymore. I'm just, I can't take any more of it. It's pure stress in there. Because it goes in bad moods and that if we can't get any. And it's me that gets it, but. Better get off it soon. Candice is expecting a little girl in three months' time.
Back at court, Stephen's case is still going on and centred around the CCTV from the post office on the night of the break-in. We just went through the statements for the lawyer and Stella's made her less what might happen, but they're not releasing the CCTV. Just need to wait and see if the judge will push it on for us, because there's not much we can do to get it. Stephen's court case is finally adjourned, so that his defence team have a chance to assess the CCTV evidence for themselves. Last time on the scheme, compulsive cleaner Betty. I maybe do it now, I'll go back over it later on. And garden mad Harry. Is what I like to see everything flourishing. Then I know it's going to be all right. Entered the Central East Ayrshire gardening competition. I'm excited for Harry. It'd be a shame for anything to go wrong now. Today's the big day, and the judges are expected at any minute. I'm probably have a clipboard or something with them. Marks for this, marks for that. Whatever. They, they know what they're talking about because they know they're all the different clothes that the begonias are in. Because one of them's a, he is a begonia man, he likes begonias, as far as I know. I see somebody driving up here. I better let her out because he's the man. Put that flag away. After weeks of planting, crimping, and preening, the moment of truth has arrived for Harry. Hello, how are you, Kim? The first thing we look for is actually quality of the plant material. It doesn't matter though it's flowers, vegetables, or grass, but we must have the, the quality. And then after that, it's actually the, the setup, the design, and also the, the blending in the colour, which is, is good. Last year, Harry came runner up in the competition to a lady whose garden has already won 14 years in a row. She bet she's desperate to win this. She's not like me, Betty. Betty likes to be number one. She was delighted last year when I got rid of her up. I don't know what she'd be like this year if I win it. <laughs> Initially, the judges seem impressed. However, one judge has a few improvements regarding Harry's begonias. It's what they call Laurentia, or it's a Toma, as it's called now. Uh -huh. And it, it would be uh, nice. And it's no so overpowering as this, and you could put that actually through that. Oh, yeah. so you can't see your begonia there, but I'm, I'm impressed with that. That is actually a nice blend of colour. Mm -hmm. so, well done. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. This year I start every night here. <laughs> <laughs> After half an hour, the judging is over. I think oh, it went thanks. quite well. But she says there are a lot of gardens to cover. Uh, we are under the private garden uh, section. Uh, so, here's home. But I think all in all they were pleased with it. They said it was very, very good. And but, they've stayed in the consideration the weather conditions up here. But then again, Harriet enjoys it. So That's it. It's nothing to do with prizes. Prizes is a wee... <laughs> Last time on the scheme, James was trying to get off heroin, with Libby buying him methadone every day from local dealers to try and help his cravings. I think about all the time. I well, should pass, hopefully. James was struggling to stay clean of heroin, but doing well, and looked as if he might have finally kicked his habit. I did not right. Take that day at a time. A month later, though, He's back from town and has just got away from the police. Off. Just now they caught shot off and my pal got caught instead. Huh? He had a box of stuff, I had a box. He's 48, so he's no fit. So he had the big box and I had the wee box. I says, give us wee box and we'll go this way. So he says, he chose to go left, I chose to go right. He went left, I turned and pulled his head and muckled, but I just ran. I'm not going to come back and get him. Fucking lighter. Yeah. This is meant to be the best smack in Scotland. Not the best kit in Scotland, this state here. I like to use clean water all the time. Prevents you from getting any fucking 
I told you this is easy. Fuck, didn't update on us again, man. I'm too far in, I'm going to go to jail. That's what I'm going to do. It's only way I'm going to really get out of it, you know what I mean? Really. You're trying to take me a minute, Bill. Stephen's fed up with it all, you know? That's why he's seen me, he's had a life. Drugs. I want a charge. Huh? Ah, he's coming, he's coming. I swear it's pushing at me, I need it. I gave him an ultimatum, he gets his cell sort of out, he's out the door. The folk he brings in and what they're doing. They could die or end in my house and then we all get roped into a murder. No, it's not happening. I'm on a way, I'm on a way now, you will look at my aim here, man. Ah, I'm dinner. I'm not my dinner. Surveyors have arrived to assess the community centre. The question is, how bad have the cracks got? And are there even more problems lurking? Arbeg Centre, 13 Arbeg Avenue, date of inspection. Nothing happens in the scheme without people knowing about it. And after a few minutes, the Crees turn up to check on the surveyor's progress. Hiya. I only had a cursory walk around with a chat for the council, but right. when first view, I mean, there's, there's nothing. It's as if there was a pond in the tap and No. Well, there are a few cracks, but... Got a plaster. For it. No, I think there's going to be a lot more money to spend on it than that, in fairness. The windows aren't in the best of order either. I mean, like, quite expensive to buy these windows. It's quite a sizable document that we're going to give you. It's not going to be, like, two pages. The guys say there will be money. We all knew there's going to be money to be spent. And if the rains would leave the place alone, going to swear on there, but I thought I'd get them now. Then, I don't know, we just need to wait and see what happens. The Crees are desperate to reopen the centre for the community. That is, if they can afford any repairs that the survey throws up. Even though he's been excluded from mainstream school, Libby is still desperate to get her youngest son, Stephen, back into some sort of education, and has come into the charity that asked him to take time out for bad behaviour to see if they will take him back onto their education programme. Stephen was involved in a bit of homophobic bullying. Stephen decided that it would be okay to give him some um, abuse. Right, how come it's always me, but man, it was awful doing it on. They can't ask people to decide. Yeah. Well, man, mm -hmm. you wanna. We have to get to a point where we can get you back in and, and to support you moving on. How, how do we do that? Aye. You have to want to come in, Stephen, and you I have do. to want to be in here buying into the programme and not. I know, and we've been here before, I know. and you sit there and you yes, no, but yes. Only one, man. We're here to support you, right? And the behaviour you, you did that day is not acceptable, mm. and we can't have you in here when you do that. How did it get to the point that day where it was, like, totally, really aggressive? I think at that point it was, Stephen was starting to show off in front yeah. of other young people. That's Probably what it was. Aye, right? that's what it was, right. showing off. That's what it sounds like. Yeah, it does. It has, is there anything you want to say? No. No. Back at the house, James has had a close call after overdosing. His cousin Brian saved his life by calling in paramedics. He was just lying there on the bed with his eyes shut, no moving, no talking, I was shouting on him. They were applying, and you know, straight away there was something wrong with that, you know what I mean? Then I woke up with the country with the green paramedic, and I was like, yeah, fucking that for me, he's gone, just take a wee bit, I'll not take your dunt away, won't you? I said, I don't fucking want it, I don't want it, I'll just take the edge off. I said, what edge? I've not got an edge. I don't fucking want it, just get to fucking my house. The paramedics have brought James round this time. 
and Stephen has charmed his way to another chance on the course. I'm back in, sorted, steady, sent him all sorted in the house. So it's something to do, innit? I don't actually like to get dealt off bad, I hate it, obviously. So I've got a little bit of good marriage, but he's still sure kids who's finest. I get through <laughs> life just doing effing what you want. You've got to listen to these folk because that's what rules and regulations are for. Stephen has another chance, but James has blown his opportunity to come clean and is back heavily addicted. I fucking addict, man. I can fucking kick myself so I could. I've done it, you know what I mean? I can't fucking change it. I can't turn a coke back. But I can only try and make things better. I was fucking that determined to date to and then just. I don't know, man, I just fucked up. After months looking for a job, Gordon is now working at a local food processing plant. Uh, it's a job, obviously. The, the, the gaming season is duty finished, but it finishes next month. But he's keeping a certain amount of people in to date chickens all year round. Gordon has been promoted to supervisor and has managed to get his 21 year old son David onto the books. What at it? Process game. It's still good. I got a bonus every week. 50 pound bonus. I saw this then work. It's still with hogs, fold it less against one of the machines. Well, there's a supervisor. Just jealousy, um. Gordon has got David a job, and his daughter, 16 year old Kimberly, has also started at the local hairdressers. 20 year old Chris may be about to become a dad, but his behaviour is getting the whole family down. So you hear in this house? Drugs this, drugs that, drugs this. Kiss for that. Smack this. Then it's like, can we look at first yesterday? Oh, it's only good way in the family. They can't even be selling smack or anything. He used to go and put the windows in and everything. Like, I think because of my nephew down through heroin, and they were right anti smack, they were right against heroin. And then Chris was ended up addicted to it. A month later, round at Libby's, James is showing no signs that he can change. I don't see him coming off at any time soon. Definitely not. It's all I promise he's finished straight, but the minute that's run about him, it'll be as bad as ever again. Just we should get clear it on. Get a life somewhere for himself. James may be stuck in a rut, but with the help of the charity that have allowed him back, Stephen has applied for a college course in joinery, and he's managed to get his first ever interview. He's off to Kilmarnock for some last-minute coaching. A very common question: What are your weaknesses? And if somebody said to you, "What are your weaknesses?" What would you say? When they tell them what my weaknesses are, anyway. But Everybody's weaknesses. I have seen. Scared these spiders. What have you said? When other people don't do what they say they will, you become frustrated. Right. Well, I have the past six months to nine months, he's grew up an awful lot. He's not the wee silly boy that he used to be. And if you get into this last bit of bother, he grew up, really grew up, a lot wiser in the head. And he takes. Like you say, I'm on board a lot more instead of just shrugging it. Takes time to think before they act now. See, like now, you've never taken your eyes off me now because I'm not asking you questions. Mm -hmm. The minute I ask you a question, you look away, you look down. No, I'm trying to think about what to say. You're trying to think about what to say. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you prepare tonight, and it only takes an hour, because at the end of the day, this is your future. So an hour tonight for your future tomorrow. OK, Steve. Are you sure I hope he'll be a lot wiser than his older brother for a starter. And stay away from the drugs. Make some of his life. Because he's young enough and clever enough to do it. If he stays away from the drugs. Which I think he will. I think he's seen too much of the James and other brands running about us. Because it's a day to day basis about you. After a week's wait, the male finally arrives at Harry and Betty's with the result of the gardening competition. 
Ну, не легло. Да бъм ме чрез, а? Не е сега и те фархаде. Сега ме лаше. Да не ро. Да не ро. Sie wollen eine Wasche, das muss ich behelfen. Sie sehen, dass sie behelfen wird. Warum bringen sie mir da? Sie muss mir gut das wollen. Sie muss mir... See, you're there to enjoy it. See, a lot of people are just in it for the prizes. I think, really, if you don't enjoy it and it's all stress, you're better not doing it. It's the same as last year, but it's something, isn't it? Yet again, pipped to the post by the now 15-year champion, Mrs. Ross. Harry has decided to size up the competition by attending the prize giving this year. A month after her mum cut contact with her, Candice has been trying to help Chris and has been lending him money. She's just given him the money she'd been saving for baby clothes. I think he is going to get off it. I believe him. But better hurry up. Today, Chris gets his gyro, and Candice is expecting him to repay her once he's cashed it in at the post office. He says that he's getting it all to me. So, because he owes me it. It was me. Pure honours of money. I've just got to go and buy baby clothes and that way at the moment. But baby clothes aren't Chris's top priority. At Libby's, desperate for drugs, James has just stolen all his mum's money. <laughs> I would have looked good straight down all of them. <laughs> Come on, okay. Show it running away. I'm doing it right this time. She's a real disgrace here, person, man. You don't need that to your family, man. You know what I mean? That will. I've, I've always thought you don't do things like that to your family, you know what I mean? That's just bad, man. And, he knows not to do it, not means it's it's hard enough to get by in that. But this. And him doing that, man, that's just that's no. wrong, man. If you asked me, my mum would have gave him anything. She always does. I've just started building my stuff up and he's still at my house. So that's how he doesn't even get in my door now. He's my brother, I love him, I'll always love him. I can say what I want about him, but nobody else can. He's a fucking asshole, man. Hope something bad happens to him out there, and I don't mean die, I hope he gets battered, fuck it. Deserves it. With no money. Libby has to ask for a crisis loan to put food on the table. Chris is back from the bookies with some bad news for Candice. Hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. Yeah, Dad. I swear in that unborn man's life, I lost £150 in the bookies. Chris may be telling Candice that he's lost the cash, but in fact, he's actually won over £300. And then he gave me the money to go down and buy stuff. He'll be going to get it somehow. I don't care how he gets it. <laughs> and I'm not kidding on And I will back on, I swear to God. It's nine in the morning, and Stephen is getting ready to impress at his big interview. What are my greatest dreams? No idea. Yeah, he's awful nervous, this man. <laughs> and it's not like him. I think it's because he really wants to get through with it and get it. It's just meeting the folk now, actually going in and cunts asking me questions and all that. If they were asking me, do you get on well with folk? I don't really. Obviously, I'm going to lie. I'm going to say, oh, I am brilliant with folk. I'm a loving, caring young man. Went for a wee silly boy to a young man. <laughs> and he thinks a lot more now. About his future. Ah, he's gonna do alright. You get a gift to the girl. I think you should basically try to say I've got a big mouth. No. Then they talk shit to you. 
When if I get that off you? That's me, innit? Time to go. You're off. Aye. Right, good luck, Harry. Right. Sure, Emma. I'm sorry, I thought better than Flit, so I think my chances are that good, but it's not just give me something today, you know what I mean, like everybody else does. This, this could be my life, basically, you know? Sounds a bit cheesy, but you have a trade, you know what I mean? It's, it's always got to be there and you've always got to be able to use it. It's, it's better than signing the brew anyway, innit? it? It's going to be a bash. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. Following two weeks' wait, the Crees finally had the survey of the old community centre in their hands. They've raised over £4,000 and are hoping it might be enough to get the building open. Shocked. Really shocked. We thought inside a lick of paint and everything. But when you see these prices, £880, that's the day the roof's laying. Replace rainwater gutters and downpipes, £2,500. And today the wind is £3,540. It's broke down so that the most important things is going to get done first, but the first year we would need £30,000. I feel it's a bit much. We'll need to get a meeting with the council and see what they can come and go with us and on, and then we'll need to take it for there. After stealing his mum's money, James hasn't been seen in the scheme for two weeks. He's ended up in a Glasgow hostel with the stolen cash spent, and with no drugs, he's suffering from serious withdrawals. Depression. Just worse because of the statement. Because I'm fucking constantly rotten. I have been for fucking four days. I sent a mail out, but I don't know if she got it. I don't have my clue. She's no one like that. I don't deserve all that back anyway. I fucking take me a bit. Three years, man, to write one page. Back at Libby's, she's just received James's letter. Dear my wee mama, it's just a bit fucked up, I'll say something here. Yeah. Writing me a heavy heart. I've done you deal wrong again. Ma, I'm so sorry. I want to die here. Ma, please don't send the police for me. Because this is my real chance. Once I get my title sorted, then I'll send you 20 to 25 every time to help me back that on a pound, promise. My rent here is £32.50 per two weeks. I get breakfast, dinner, and a wee roll at night, and I shower in my shitty room. No bad, my. So, so sorry. And I love you forever, my dear. In my best pal in the world. You know that, by for now, my lords. I love and hugs and kisses your son, James. Please write back, yes, AP, please, ma'am. I love you. Love you, bats. Like one thing, ma'am. Angry, ma'am. I think I've been up here on his own. I feel sorry for my wife going to get him, bring him home. I suppose he's a big boy now, just need to let me go. But... Candace has decided that she doesn't want to have her baby in Chris's house. And as she's due in five weeks, has managed to get her own flat at the top of a block five miles from the scheme. My face is all black with that gloss. Eh? This has got to be the nursery. Just need to tidy up the lines in here and then that's all done in a second coat. <coughs> we need to stare to it in, in the hall. That's the bathroom. That's a tip. I'm getting a new bathroom tomorrow, but it's a no point doing that up. This is the living room. We've just put like new sockets everywhere. Just need it wallpapered and carpeted and furniture. Just got new windies and all. Obviously there's nothing here because I'm getting a new kitchen tomorrow. It's all right, but it's a bit high up, but I, I, I needed to take it. If I didn't take it, basically it'd be an air cut a month to get a view in, so... It's better than nothing. Candice has realised she can't rely on Chris. You don't care about anything else. 
the minute Chrissy's got a tenner, that's where it goes to. Do you know what I mean? If he's sitting with the electricity, it doesn't matter. And it pure changes you and changes your voice and all that. It's pure horrible. I wouldn't bring myself down to that life. Kay and Candice have made up. She phoned me and begged me. Didn't she? Honestly, didn't it? She said to talk to me because she wanted to come in for her dinner. Huh? Come on, Shara. Candice is still seeing Chris, though the rest of the family won't see him, and certainly haven't forgiven him. I don't like him, and I don't like why um, he's still my wee. Because he was just taking drugs, and he still takes them. I don't think it's really good, but I think it's sad. She feels like she's sad, and she is sad. The future I want is just for Chrissy to get off it and have the way in and keep my wee house going. Just have a life instead of scadging money off everybody for things for him. I don't think there will be a future with him, honestly. I think she will change once she's said the way. Because he's got a habit and all that, and nobody in that and my grand means here. No. Do you know what I mean? Mm -mm. No. Having just split up with her girlfriend, Kerry has been drinking and has dropped round to her mum's. I'm a young, free and single searching motherfucker now. <laughs> Stephen's not in the mood for a party, as his ideas of a fresh start at college may be over. He's due back in court tomorrow. He's gone for a fucking life all the daffy. Nah, I'm getting on as a fuck man. I'll be there all oh, the way, just want my be fucking bro. Till death do we fucking part, me and my bro, man. Boy! <laughs> Take it to jail, I'll just get myself to jail. You paranoid, son? No. I would be a bit, man, so I would. Mm -hmm. I would be. Not a day with me, I'm taking fuck all day. I'm just there to support my wee bro all day, every day, and I'm there all the time from anything. Harry and Betty are at the Gardening Awards to pick up second place after coming runner-up again to the champion, Mrs. Ross, who has won the trophy 15 times in a row. I don't know who she is. I haven't seen her yet. Is it 15 years she's won it for? Well, good honour. I've only been in it for three. And our next award uh, for runner-up to the best private garden in Central Area is to Mr. Cassidy. <laughs> can finally size up the competition in person. You can only get better, you've not got worse. That's a certainty. I'll be knocking at the door next year. It's the first day of Stephen's court case for allegedly breaking into the local post office, and he's beginning to get worried. I think it's just because that's where guns get sent to the jail, right? I mean, no me, but because like, it's a court, I mean, you're not meant to be happy about it when you're in it, so I try to make it as uncomfortable as possible for you in there, so. They got the show for fags, Bob. Stephen is facing a year in prison, and Libby now fears the worst. In the past four years, I've taken my hand forever. He's been my rock. He puts on such a brave face, he's shit. I feel sick, walking in, so God only knows how he feels. And I'm only there just to 
be there for him. Libby's efforts to keep her family together are being tested again. The final estimate to reopen the old community centre is over £50,000, far more than the residents' committee have raised. They have a plan, though, and have earmarked a local shop which is disused but has potential. This is an old shop. It used to be a spa shop and it belongs to Ali next door and we're thinking of uh, leasing it for him. I think this is the answer, I. Well, if we're not going to get that big centre, it's going to cost a fortune. Um, then I, this is the answer. I think this has been a storeroom or something. And there's been a kitchen and a toilet through this way. We need to get a couple of coats to see how much it's going to cost to get like, the full place done. And the committee and some of the other folks are going to be willing to come in and help whoever comes in to do it. But it's not a bad size. That's what the shop looks like just now. And that's what it's going to, hopefully, look like. The kitchen's going to come from the back to near the front. It's more hygienic. We're going to have three toilets, a gents, a, gents, a ladies and a disabled. A lot more at the new, you think. Well, never. But once all this rubbish is cleared out, we'll get there. Despite setbacks, the Crees are still raising money and determined to achieve their goal. Wow. Hopefully we'll get the funding to get it up and going. We're not going up. Yep. We will survive. Back at court, there are smiles all round. <laughs> Wait in his own. It's been a year of worry right off my shoulders. I feel 16 now. The CCTV from the post office break-in doesn't show Stephen after all. It's not even me. That does it. So we did belong here, don't that? You yeah. guy that size? Aye, aye. Well, we're we're the, well, than me, man. I've been that size, no, no this size. <laughs> Libby is over the moon. There's also been a surprise round at Gordon and Annie's, as their son David has been in the Sun newspaper. Right in there. It says Mark Tyrell bends in the opening goal for Lithingloe. Whitlet's one, Lithingloe Rose one. That's me there in the middle. But they're top, they're top three in Scotland, you know what I mean? We drew down one, one, one week so in the Emirates Junior Cup, so we're playing against them this weekend in Lithingloe for in the replay. Could be a potential money spinner for Whitlitz. Maybe you a bonus. David and Kimberly are determined to make something of their lives. Thank us for the black junkie snacky. <laughs> Fuck off, Pam. I think drugs are fun mugs. I just choose now to be there. My pals have been offered that hand stage. I was no. It has to be a sheep, you know what I mean? Obviously, so just. Pals have both of them just took it to that kill. It's no kill, but. Again? I think it's killing me. Jai, you NK, don't get feeling. Kissing his bear, kissing his bear. Catch you later. I've got the show. Back at Libby's, there's been an unexpected twist. James has come home. You're the only man that's in his face. You know, my mother just quit her hands with me. My mama, she should have. I should be left in the fucking streets of Glasgow. I should do it. You've done wrong. Blah, blah, blah. And I'll always be here for you. And you remember that. And after that, I just... I need to see my mum. I had about that seven quid in my pocket and I just jumped in the bus. I bought a couple of times a year. Before I was at it and I was saying I was coming after the jump, I think I had to double figures in 11 days. Libby has taken James back, but knows that good intentions have a habit of slipping away. Libby's not the only parent trying to keep drugs from destroying their family. Gordon and Annie have tried everything they can to help Chris. I think the future for Chris is to let him be in and out of detox units all the time. But I think he'll keep him back to it. It's just the way it seems to me. Why is caring about his next tenor? He's just chasing his next tenor all day long. And he's a different person altogether. 
Chris is no longer denying to his family that he's taking heroin. But he thinks he's okay. Just fuck them, man. They can say what they want. Don't mind, don't bother me. I blame somebody else, I think. It's not about me. Gordon knows how hard an addiction can be to conquer. I need a help for drink. And you've got to want help to get help. You're the one that can only do it. I don't know about Christopher's future. I don't see him having a future if he keeps taking that stuff. The amount he's taking, he's just going to get down the hole rapidly and rapidly and rapidly. And there's, there's not much I can do about it. So his future, I don't think he's got a future now. As I said, I'll, I'll say it again, he needs to want to help himself. A month later, Libby's efforts to keep Stephen on the straight and narrow are finally paying off, as he has a place at college. I'm so proud of him. I'm fucking pure proud of him, man, because he's... Not only one out has done something, then tried to do something to make his life at his age, 16, you know what I mean? So, on you went with Steve, old McMurray, we know it's on top, running a mock non fucking stop, I'm shouting. I feel great knowing that he's done something in his life. He's turning his life around. And he's going to have the a best good McMurray go at it. Ever. He's going to have a good go at it. The best McMurray ever, he, that boy's got to be, man. He's got to put all the McMurrays to shame, every single one. I can't wait for it to start, you know what I mean? Because uh, at least I know of something today. The guy says it was Hunter's fault. I just, I don't know, I just went home for the best, man. Obviously, this is the best that could have taught me, you know what I mean? So far, this is my biggest achievement, I either said. It's achievement. Oh, yeah, that's good, so that's brilliant. I don't know if you can see it. Good show, man. Oh, yeah, I'll see it, man. I made the first step. And that's ho hopefully that'll get me on my way, so. I'm saying hopefully. James and his cousin Brian have slipped back to using heroin after yet another failed attempt to go clean. I just went and got a pair there, I just bought them, man, just for a charge. Just bought them, but not me, no time, mate. That's just you a have one them in your mouth? Mm -hmm. You did, didn't you? That's just a one hour. So I just tell lies. I'm a junkie monster. I'm a junkie Later in the year, Stephen decided not to go to college, and he's currently in prison, having committed a serious assault. James and his sister Kerry were accused of stealing from a neighbour, and Libby was forced to leave the scheme for good. On the 17th of April, the number of people living in the scheme increased by one, as Candice successfully gave birth to a healthy baby girl. Life on the Scheme continues here on BBC One Scotland on Monday. More about that in a moment. Next tonight, an update from Crime Watch. Thank you.